guys, good morning. I'm behind our gazebo getting ready to plant up a couple of things in Benjamin's garden. Um, so you can see the teepee trellis we recently made. I'm really excited to give you an update on that. The beans are up. We're seeing a little bit of growth. Today I'm working on a couple of vertical gardens in Greenstock Gardens, which you can see one of them right here already set up. If you've been watching our videos for a really long time, I did a video maybe three to four years ago when I planted this very same planter up down at my parents' garden center in the greenhouse. Um, but Greenstock Garden sent us out one more, which is exciting. I wanna plant both of them up today, one with flowers and one with edibles. And I have the area pretty much set up. I think I've got almost everything I need. I need to go grab a couple more things, but let me show you the concept of this planter. So here's the new one. It's still in the box. I kind of wanted to show you guys like the whole thing come together. And then this is the one that I already had. Erin actually got it out and got it all cleaned up for me. But it's basically just a stacked planter that you can make however high you want. In fact, I think you can buy them in certain like tiers. You, like you can buy a four tier or a, like this is a five tier. This one right here has seven planting pockets in each, t uh, each level. Um, which means there are 35 opportunities to plant something in this in that much space on the ground, which is crazy. 35 plants in like, I would say, is that two feet maybe? I should measure, like a two by two area. That's pretty amazing. So the top level is actually not a plantable area. This is the watering tray. So what you do is you fill this up and a lot of the water goes down the center, but it also feeds the very top layer through this tray here with, with those little holes. And then as you go down, let me take the top planting area off here. So when you get down below that first layer, there's a tray that the water collects in and then there's the same, you know, little round holes that feed each one of the root balls. And it's like that all the way through. So you can see the watering tray in there, watering tray in there and so on. So all you have to do is have a way to fill that upper level and then all of the pockets are watered um, kind of all at once instead of having to water each individual pocket, which is nice because I think it would be easy to accidentally miss one. Um, it's just a really slick way to do it. There's also a couple of additional things that you can get. They don't come with the actual green stock. You have to order them separately, but I think they're kind of handy. So the first one is this mover. I, I'm not sure that that's what you call it, but that's what it does. <laughs> it has a bunch of wheels at the bottom. The whole system just sits right on top of it and it's really heavy duty, like it can handle a lot of weight and that way you can move it. Now it's not recommended to use this piece if you're putting them out in the garden like I am because those wheels can move, you can lock them, but the wheels can move and it can possibly make it fall over. It's really good though in areas like concrete areas. The other additional piece is kind of like a lazy Susan. That's like the layman's term. They call it the down under plant turner. This is what it looks like. So let's take that up to the patio. My mom hates the term lazy Susan because her name is Susan and she's anything but lazy. So here we go. Here's the down under plant turner and you can see, uh, let's see, yeah, it holds up to 400 pounds, which I can't imagine this thing would weigh even close to that much. But see how that just sets right there. And that way you can, you know, turn it however you want to and you don't have the wheels. And I think these plant turners you can actually use out in the landscape because they don't have wheels. I mean, that thing will just set right down in soil. That's what I'm gonna do. Even though this area gets quite a good amount of sun, there will be sides like the north side of the planter that won't get quite as much. And everything I'm planting today really benefits from having as much sun as possible. And I want the ability once they're planted to be able to turn it if I want to. Um, so getting this thing in place before you have all of the levels full, is kind of imperative. So I think the only thing that I need are a couple of large round stepping stones. I'm gonna sink a couple of those into the ground and I have a little level out here um, just to make sure everything's level. And I don't, you know, you can set them right on the soil. That's not a problem. Um, but in case the soil settles because of any water draining or, you know, that sort of thing, I wanna make sure that it's on a stable base and it's not gonna like start leaning to one side. Got my stepping stones and my level. So what I'm gonna do is just scoot this aside and put my stepping stone down and kind of trace out the area that I need to dig out a little bit. And then we'll set the stepping stone down in the hole, use the level to get it as level as possible. And then we can start in with the actual running of the drip.
you guys see that? Perfectly level. Both ways. I did run out and I grabbed our tamper just because that made it a little bit easier to get this looser soil kind of tamped as firmly as possible. Um, that way we'll just have less of a chance of this shifting. We don't get an enormous amount of rain usually. We've had a lot this spring, but like during the summer months, it's pretty dry and we have our irrigation very controlled where it goes. So I don't anticipate having any problem, but it always makes me feel better to start like with a, a semi proper base. Like I didn't do any gravel layer or sand or anything like that, but putting a level paver I think is a good start. Future Laura here just wanted to cut in really quick to let you know that you will see me run a drip tube through the bottom of these planters and you may see that drip tube throughout portions of the video. Drip does not work for these gardens and I have since removed the drip system from them and I'll explain all of that later. Just wanted to let you know do not set up drip to your green stock gardens. On with the video. Now before I put the water tray on and the uh, next layers I'm gonna fill this with soil first just because it's a lot easier to do it that way. So I'm planting both flowers and vegetables. In this first tower I'm gonna plant a whole bunch of supertunias which I think is gonna be gorgeous. A huge supertunia tower. So I'm gonna be adding in my continuous release plant food like I do with all of my flowers but for the one where I'm planting edibles I'm gonna be adding in an organic fertilizer which I'm gonna be using the garden tone. Got a few bags right here. Okay guys, I don't know what I was thinking. I apparently cannot count. There are six planting pockets in each level. So that's 30 planting pockets total between all the levels. I've got my soil in here and my continuous release plant food just mixed that in. And I think while each level is open like this, I'm gonna go ahead and plant my flowers because it's just so much easier to maneuver the soil around. And like I said, this one's gonna have super tunias, which I have right over here. And I just picked out a really fun mix of color. So there's Supertunia Lovey Dovey, Snowdrift, Silverberry, Bubblegum, Royal Magenta. This is a new one coming out called Raspberry Blast. Isn't that neat? I think it'll just be a really fun mix. And in the flower tower, I am not gonna plant up all 30 planting pockets because you guys know how huge Supertunias grow. And I've got some vistas in here too, like the Bubblegum, the Snowdrift, the Silverberry, and those get enormous. So I'm actually only gonna plant two pockets on each level, so one on either side. And then I'm just gonna kind of rotate for each level so that they can really grow to their potential um, and I just don't think it's necessary when you're using this type of flower. And these do not have to be deadheaded either. So the only thing I'm gonna have to do maintenance wise is come out and fertilize once a week. That's it. So this one is done and like I said I only did two supertunias per layer. I will admit that I did second guess the whole two supertunias per layer and I called Aaron out here uh, for a second opinion and you guys know his opinion less is more and they'll grow and fill in and he's probably right um, but it is really hard for me you guys know this not to jam every last inch of space full of something. So this will be kind of a fun experiment we'll see how long it takes to not be able to see any more of the actual planter. So now we're going to move on to the edibles tower which I'm going to be using some of these buried treasure red strawberries look at this benjamin's gonna love it right from the very beginning and some beautiful lady godiva yellow calendulas beautiful edible flowers i thought it'd be pretty to mix the two because these strawberries bloom a beautiful red have beautiful berries but then this will bring a nice bright pop of color too So before I get this one all planted up, I just wanted to stop at the first level and talk about how I'm gonna amend the soil. So I've got it full of fresh potting mix, which does have nutrients in it already. So I'm not starting from scratch, but I am gonna add some garden tone in, um, just as good as I can into the top layer of soil, just at the root level of the plants. Uh, and then I can add more of this as we go through the season. I can just top dress the soil a bit and kind of scratch it in with my fingers. And then again, I've got the Lady Godiva yellow calendulas and the Buried Treasure red strawberries. And I'm actually gonna plant every single one of the pockets for this one. And we're just gonna go every other, calendula, strawberry, calendula, strawberry. And I think it'll be a really spectacular end result. The edible tower is done and it's looking very fun and bright and I love the way strawberries look hanging off 
the side. It looks so sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a thin layer of mulch over everything to kind of tidy it up. And then I'll show you what it all looks like in the end. All right, it is a new day. As I was finishing up the area, laying the last of the mulch, I was looking around and I could see some really dry plants. So it sent me into a total panic and I had to run around the entire garden to make sure everything was watered. One thing led to another, but the area kind of does look a little bit better this morning. It's not quite as sunny yet. One of the gardens is in sun and then the other one will be in sun here pretty quick. So I wanna show you the whole area and the gardens up close. Things are coming right along. You can see where I ran out of mulch, kind of right in the middle. So I need to go pick up more and I have some things I'm gonna plant here in this back corner and I did come out and run some fairy lights on the teepee last night which was so fun uh, but I do want to show you the gardens up close one more time so we have the super tunia tower here which I cannot wait to see grow and fill in let me show you from the other side as well you can see all the colors and I can see I've got more pots I need to fill up as well and I don't know about you guys but when I think vertical gardening my mind goes straight to patios small space gardening because you can plant so much in such a small amount of space in gardens like these um, but I also think it's fun to do something like this with the super tunias you pop them in a flower bed somewhere kind of where they're a standalone once those flowers grow and fill in and you can't see the planter anymore it looks like a super neat like how did you do that you know people will wonder that it's a little bit of mystery which is super fun and here's the edible tower which I did end up planting all of the pockets and it looks really pretty so we have the lady Godiva yellow calendula which these grow more mounded like 10 to 16 inches tall they're a zone 7 through 11 uh, so they're not an annual in my area although we can get them to winter over in a cold frame usually but they'll bloom from planting all the way through frost so you get color all season and they do not need to be deadheaded which is perfect because there's quite a few in here there's 15 of the calendulas in here um, so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a whole bunch of extra work and then the strawberries look at this buried treasure red they're a zone four through nine and they're an ever bearing type strawberry so they will just produce berries all throughout the whole season which is perfect we're not going for huge production numbers. I'm not looking to make jam or freeze a bunch. We just want them for fresh eating. So now I do want to talk about the watering a little bit because you did see me try to run a drip system, which I try to do with all of my containers, but then we figured out that it doesn't work um, because a lot of the water will go through the center to disperse to the other levels of the planter. And if you have something blocking the way, the water doesn't move as efficiently. And also there's a gauge in that reservoir that has numbers. So three, four, five, depending on how many tiers you have, you need to fill that reservoir to that number in a quick way um, so that you can make sure all of your tiers are getting the proper amount of water let me show you so try not to cast a shadow you can see the numbers right here three four five with lines and that way you can easily tell how full you need to fill the reservoir based on how many tiers you have so since I have five here I would need to make sure to fill it to the five. And having your container set up on drip is really nice, but it just doesn't work with this because the water comes out too slowly, so it wouldn't disperse evenly all the way to the bottom of the tower. They do come with a lot of really good information as well. The guide that they send is full of tips and instructions. There's also a really good diagram on how the watering works, which is super helpful for me to look at. So that's it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those gardens come together. I'm really excited to give you updates on how they're looking throughout the season, especially Especially the super tunia one I think that's gonna be just so so pretty and bright and colorful and I think they're the perfect element back here in this garden in Benjamin's garden and honestly Benjamin probably will not care that much about this garden this year he's just a year and a half but one of my most fun things is looking through pictures uh, photo albums that my mom has put together of our childhood my brother and sister and I I can see all of the stuff that she and my dad were doing with us and for us and um, how special that was even though I don't have a lot of memories of especially the really early times I I can see how much fun they were having with us and how much effort they were putting out to make our childhood really special and I want Benjamin to have that I also it's fun for me like this is really fun and it's gonna be an evolving process like it probably won't all be done this year so we can work on it and add things that I think Benjamin will like and then eventually hopefully he will love his little area back here so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video and hanging out with me today and we will see you in the next one bye